Okay, um, let's get started with today's um, channel, not channel, challenge. <laughs> I'm confused here. Um, so we are on week 36 of the A Layer A Day challenge, but before I tell you more about today's challenge, I have a plethora of shout outs to give. <laughs> um, First of all, we welcomed a whole bunch of new butterflies. Welcome to all of you who just uh, joined the Allure A Day Challenge Facebook group and the challenge in say. Um, I'll answer that question later, Kim. Uh, I wanted to say a special welcome to Denise Lalonde, uh, Linda Rogers, Andrea Griffun, who's with us tonight, and Jackie Hunter. A special welcome to Jackie, who was apparently a bit scared to show her first layers, and then she just followed up with the next uh, couple of layers. Jackie, that made me so, so happy to see that the group made you feel so comfortable that you just went for it and just shared everything. So thank you for your trust and Thank you for joining us, like seriously. And then I have a very special shout out because it's not related to an actual spread, although she made a beautiful spread again this week, but she wrote a comment that seriously moved me. And I'm actually talking to Kathy Seek. Kathy, thank you for that one little comment where you wrote that you were amazed about how inventive the group was because that's what it's all about. Everyone is showing layer one and then layer two and then layer three and you see the build up from everyone, no matter what that person is going through because we all have some layers that we're not very comfortable sharing and yet we do share it because we know that we're all on the same boat and we all have those kind of layers that are not that extraordinary to show but yet we do it um so caddy acknowledged the fact that the group is so inventive and then you can see all those several layers and those build-ups and how each and every one of us starts to spread in a completely different way although we all work around that same prompt and then builds a spread that is completely different from one another despite the fact that we work around the same prompt. So she wrote, and that that's what really sparked something in me, how it stretched her brain to see all those different ways to start that spread last week. So Kathy, thank you so much for writing that comment that really hit home with me. It really made me proud and and glad to have this group and and keep on building it up people keep on layering so that's what um oh you welcome d <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for everyone for making the group what it is that's for the shout outs now for the challenge so this month we're all working on going back to school and discovering what it's like to our channel. What is our channeling for us? How do we our channel? What does it mean for us? Um, what does it spark in us? And last week we journaled about our colors. So usually when we talk about our channeling, we say, yes, so you have colors and then you have shapes. Of course, so this week it's all about the shape. That one shape that you want to use over and over again. Obsession, anyone? <laughs> Can you feel my obsession? If you know me, you know what I'm going to talk about. For me, it's circles, like circles everywhere. I wanna put circles on everything. <laughs> um, I am so obsessed with circles that I have a new stencil, which will come out, which is called EpiCycle because no such thing as too much circles. So, um, well, you can take this challenge in two completely different ways. You can either opt to go for your go-to shape and work around that shape. For me, that would be circles. For Kathleen, that would be rectangles. I have 
never seen anyone rock my rectangle stencil like Kathleen does. I know she's watching me. <laughs> so um, you can either go for your go-to um, shape or you could do the complete opposite and wonder what other shape is out there that could get you going, that could make your heart sing while you're journaling. Uh, step out of your comfort zone and try something completely different. I haven't decided yet which one I'm going to do. If I'm going to go in circles again, or if on the other hand, I'm going to step away from it and, and try something completely different. I don't know yet. So what are you going to do hmm? with your shape? Are you going to go for your go-to shape and indulge in your obsession? Or are you going to walk away from it and start something completely new? Let's catch up on the comments. More circles. Yes, Sharon, I'm sorry. More circles. Hello, Heather. Welcome. Hello, Elizabeth. Uh, if you see a little pain, all about circles. Well, you're not different, Kathleen. You have your own kind of obsessions. <laughs> um, but okay back to the shape I wanted to invite you just like last week we worked around our color palette we wondered what our colors were I would like you to think this week about what those or that shape means to you and seriously ever since I came up with this challenge I was like what do circles mean to me and sometimes I can come up with 30 million explanations and then some other days I'm like what is it with the circles so Kathleen what is it with the rectangles what do they mean to you why is that shape so such an obsession of yours um keep an open mind when you're asking yourself that question don't beat yourself up if you don't come up with an, a reply I mean one day maybe we'll know maybe we won't so be it. Um, keep an open mind and please remind yourself that we feel before we think. And I think that that is so important in our channeling. Um, this week, again, it is very important because if we go for that shape, it means that we feel something. We feel some kind of connection with that shape. So what does it mean to us? And why do we keep going back to it colors evolve and i think that shape evolve as well maybe not as fast especially not for me if you consider how long i've been journaling with circles um but i do think that there's an evolution there as well but why do i feel that way about that shape and to make it clear that we do feel before we think you can feel thirsty before you know why you feel thirsty. I mean, you can eat a bag of very salty chips and then think, I need to drink because I've been eating a lot of salt. If you don't think that way, at some point you'll be like, I'm thirsty. I need to drink. Why am I thirsty? Oh, yeah, I ate a oh, complete bag of salty chips. Usually it's that second thing that happens. We feel before we think and we feel we need to drink because we're thirsty. And then maybe with some analysis we can know why we are thirsty. So it's the same thing with our art channeling. Why that shape? I feel attracted to that shape. Maybe you can figure it out why and maybe it can tell you a lot about yourself. Maybe you can discover some things about yourself. Right? Isn't that why we are into art showing? And if this is all too spooky for you and too, wow, how far is she going to reach to get us journaling? Just journal. Just go with some shapes that you like and that's it. No need to ask yourself any questions. But do put down a layer each and every day. That's important. See me pointing my wand at you? You have to. Okay, let's catch up. <clears throat> I love circles, but this is a great challenge and try something new. Well, Heather, I thought the same thing <laughs> and I thought, no, I still want to do circles. So I haven't decided yet, but yeah, we're on the same page. 
Um, yeah, Sharon, I love Kathleen's rectangles too. I have to say that she is, she is brilliant with those rectangles. Um, then another thing that I wanted to say is have a look at, <clears throat> excuse me, how your colors influence your shapes or how your shapes, shape, <laughs> influences your color. If I look at my circles, very often I feel the urge to put an ombre in that circle. I've tried to do it a bit less lately. I don't know if you noticed. I did try. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, I have to pay attention to it because once I have a circle on, on the paper, I'm like, okay, and now ombre. Light at the top, shade at the bottom. Um, have a look at your journal. Maybe it could be a good thing to flip through your journal and have a look at how your color influences your shape or the other way around, how your shape influences the color. And have a look at that while you're journaling this week. And that's it. Have fun playing. That is all I had to say today. I'm done. Go, go and put down a layer a day. Okay, one more thing. If you're new to art channeling, if you're new to the challenge, you might be thinking, okay, now what? Now is a good time to join the Facebook group because um, like um, Kathy said, that is where you will find a lot of inspiration because everyone starts with the first layer and then the next day everyone puts down the second layer. So you will see a lot of different ways to start with your spread, first thing. And second thing, you're doing this for you. You're not trying to create the new Mona Lisa that will hang in the Louvre. You're just working in your little art channel, your secret garden. So stop stressing yourself and just Put something down, five minutes, one layer in your journal, no matter what that layer is, just put it down. That's the most important thing. Join the group and have fun. That is how we journal around here. Okay, I'm done. <clears throat> 15 minutes. I, I like these prompts. Um, if you have any more questions, now is a good time to ask them because I'm going to sign off in 20 seconds. Oh, I don't have a... <laughs> I cannot see seconds around here. Okay, I'm going to sign off um, very, very shortish. So if you have any questions, now is a good time to ask them. Uh, I'm looking forward to see all the layers. I'm also looking forward to journal from my table back there again. Um, <clears throat> it's been a while. Um, yes, we do. What do you do, Kathleen? That's not a question. That's a, that's a sentence. <laughs> um, because the spread that you saw last week was done in France as well. Oh, how do we get unstuck, Heather? You go for a walk or you put on some nice music. You stop asking yourself why you're stuck. You stop beating yourself up. You just wonder about what it is you feel like putting down in your journal, whatever that is, and you just do that without wondering how you're going to continue building up on that or why you feel like putting that down. You just put that down, that one layer. And if you have to do it singing out loud, just do it singing out loud. Find a way that stirs some happy feeling inside. Well, not happy feeling like, ah, we're all living on a pink cloud, but a non-stressed, non-beat up feeling. That is what you're looking for. And then just put down whatever comes up in your mind. That's the most important thing. Because we feel before we think. So if that's what you feel like putting down, Put that down. <clears throat> and like Cynthia said, pretend you're a five-year-old. That helps too. <laughs> well said. Absolutely, Annika. Absolutely. There is... It's your secret garden. It's your journal. So 
like Donna Downey once said, what's the worst thing that could happen? It's just one page in a journal. <laughs> Mahalo. <laughs> Oh, Nadine, coucou <rire> Je suis contente de te voir aussi. Mon Dieu, ça fait plaisir. <rire> ok, there is no more questions popping up. Oh, Nadine, je ne sais pas si tu sais, mais tu sais mettre la traduction dans les sous-titres, quelque part, sur YouTube. Je ne sais pas où, il faut chercher. Mais il y a la traduction dans les sous-titres. Ok, back to English. <rire> uh, I'm going to sign off. I'm looking forward to see all your layers in the group. I'm looking forward to share all the new stuff with you soon. If you are one of my patrons, um, especially one of the 15 plus patrons, I did send you a private message this afternoon. You might want to check your inbox because I haven't received any replies. I'm getting worried here. Um, <clears throat> um, 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 and that's it. See you soon on the web. Butterfly kisses, everyone. Thank you for joining me again today. Bye-bye. Where is the sign off button? I think it's this one.